Hey guys, this is Christy Lewis from Christy Lewis Reviews, Books Worth Your Time, and I wanted to start a new series where we talk about books that you can read to relax for bedtime because I do a lot of reading while I'm trying to relax for bedtime. If I'm reading during the day, it's usually something really exciting and intellectually stimulating, something that I would have to take notes on, you know, or research for my books or something like that. But at night, when I'm relaxing, it has to be a really chill whatever. <laughs> it, a lot of times it's fantasy, like the bigger epic styles of fantasy or children's books. Those tend to work the best for me. So I just thought I would share this in a series in case there are other people out there who are struggling with the same thing. And I'm sure there are other people out there who read to relax and who struggle to sleep at night. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Sometimes I may also share like movies or TV shows that work for me because why not? I talked about The Prince and the Popper in my Boo to You wrap up video. So I will give you more details about this one in Boo to You 2019 wrap up video. However, this is a medieval style fantasy set in the court of Henry VIII and it's told from the perspective of two boys um, one is a prince and one wishes he was a prince and is very poor and they end up through a wild comedy of errors switching places and they look enough alike that nobody believes the poor boy when he's like no no I'm not the prince and nobody believes the prince when the prince is like no no I'm the prince the king dies and the poor boy's family moves around and all these crazy plot twists happen and they just have a terrible time trying to get back to each other. So this was totally entertaining, quite a farce. It went on for a little longer than I would have liked, but it was perfect for bedtime. It wasn't quite as engaging as I would like for bedtime either, but Samuel Clemens is the author. So you know it's going to be clever. It's going to have some really good social points in there like about how they treated poor people and how the laws were just really, really harsh against them and stuff like that. And it's fun seeing his perspective on the child, Prince Edward, who is the, the son of Henry VIII, who ends up, you know, in history taking over for him. And that is the prince that we're following around in this book. That is the, the prince. And then there's the pauper who exchanges places with him. So it's pretty fun. I really did enjoy this one. I probably would give it like a 3 out of 5 stars, but that's that's really okay for a bedtime read for me. If it's not exciting enough, sometimes I do tend to drift off, and I had that problem a little bit with this one. But the most important thing is it didn't emotionally get me too often to where I was like, I can't sleep! There were a few moments in here, like when somebody is burned at the stake, which are like... <laughs> I can't. Why are you doing this to me before bed, book? But overall, this was great for bedtime reading. It's a good classic. I would definitely say good for kids. Good for kids, good for teens, and good for adults. I also read the first book in the Betsy Tacey series, which was recommended to me by Kate Howe. And this is a really long series that follows the life of Betsy and I guess of her friends as well as they grow up. And I think like the first four books are her life before high school. And then there's some high school books and then there's some grown-up books, so it's kind of like Anne of Green Gables. So I read the first book um, for bedtime and it, it did the job. I, again, kind of like with The Prince and the Popper, I wasn't like super, super engaged with it, but it just kind of was enough to where I can like glide through it really easily and I, it was good for bedtime for sure. And there was a few cute things in it that I quote. And I'm going to insert here some footage of my review of this book. Play! Kate Howe did a Betsy Tacey read-along that Books and Jams was doing and that's why I picked this up. I just was intrigued because I was following Books and Jams for like the last year as she was reviewing these and I just got really curious when I met Kate as well so I decided to pick it up and I'm glad I did. This is about two girls, Betsy and Tacey, who become friends. It was written by Maud Hart Lovelace and published in 1940. It's supposed to be kind of like Anne of Green Gables. It is sort of like that. This is a really, really young version of that. And it's set in America, not on Prince Edward Island. There's a lot less description in this than in Anne of Green Gables, but maybe in the future books, there will be more description. There were a few cute things in this, like when Betsy becomes an older sister. She graduates from being the baby of the family and this is very upsetting to her, but Tacey has experience with this and comforts her with such life wisdom as you can't be the baby forever. It was very whimsical and cute. 
I definitely will continue this. I already have the second book to continue at bedtime. Okay, I have a few more books that I read at bedtime, and two of them were the first two books in the series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket, The Bad Beginning, and The Reptile Room. This whole series is about the three Baudelaire children, Violet, Sunny, and Klaus. Their parents die in the first book, and it's called the series of unfortunate events because their whole lives are a series of unfortunate events following that very first very unfortunate event. They end up in the clutches of one Count Olaf. He tries to steal their fortune, and that's what the whole series is about. The children are moving from guardian to guardian, and Count Olaf is chasing them and trying to win their fortune, and none of the adults ever listen to the children. I loved the first movie of this made with Jim Carrey, and I'm super excited that we may be getting Netflix soon so that I can watch the new series. The first book is about their stay with Count Olaf, and the second book is about their stay with Montgomery Montgomery. I may have a series review coming up for you guys on this series when I read a little bit further because I have some quotes from this book series that just are just so precious. I just love the series. It's perfect for bedtime. It's completely engages my attention without making me emotionally distraught, even though it deals with some emotionally very heavy things. It does it in a way that doesn't pierce you because it's written for children. It's not actually written from the perspectives of the Baudelaire's, it's written from the perspective of the author Lemony Snicket, which is obviously a pseudonym for Daniel Handler, who wrote Why We Broke Up, which is a fantastic young adult novel. I loved it. He just has such a wonderful humorous voice. Uh, in the books, all of his books, as far as I'm aware, I haven't read his adult books, so I don't know anything about those, but they look pretty funny too. So in the series of unfortunate events, you're reading the files of Lemony Snicket as he investigates the horrible history of the Baudelaire orphans. And like I said, the voice is just hilarious. And I would really need the quotes in order to demonstrate that for you guys. But this is one of my favorite children's series and I do highly recommend it for bedtime for kids and adults as well. Although for kids, it might be a little bit exciting. I don't know. I remember being completely enthralled with these when I was younger. So there may be a nostalgia factor going on here, but I do actually think that they're quite well written, which is why there has been such a demand for the show and the movie and such a commitment to getting it put on the screen. And the other thing that has been helping me get to sleep lately is Avatar. I just watched book one, Water. It's kind of like season one. I don't know, I'll put it up here for you so you can see it. This is so cute. It's about two kids from the Water Tribe. I think they're in the south. They find this young fellow named Aang who is the long-lost airbender Avatar, who was supposed to save the world 100 years ago, but he mysteriously disappeared. So they find him alive in a glacier. He's been like preserved in this glacier with his giant flying pig monster thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's great. Appa is the monster's name. I just really am enjoying this show. It wasn't like enough to keep me interested during the day, but it's just perfect for nighttime. It's just so cute and it's not like emotionally dramatic, it's just funny. And there's some really clever world building. So there's the Fire Nation, the Air Nomads, the Water Tribes, and I forget what the Earth people call themselves. And they all have their own magic systems and it seems pretty well drawn. And in each episode, they are traveling. They're trying to get Aang to learn. I think he's 12 years old and he needs to master all of the elements. Normal people can only use one of the elements if they're even gifted with any of them. So he's kind of a special dude. Definitely highly recommended for kids and adults for bedtime. And now I apologize for the very choppy nature of the clips to come, but I do have a few more books that I did really enjoy and I'd love for you guys to hear about them because they are perfect for bedtime. And then I will tie things up at the end. Hit it! The Age of Myth by Michael Sullivan, and this, I believe, has five books in it. I read this for my bedtime reading and it was perfect. I was actually surprised at how much I loved this book. I love that it reminds me a lot of Brandon Sanderson because of the rich um, world building and how there's so many different types of people and the humor involved. There's actually a surprising amount of humor is usually when the cultures are contrasting and people are kind of misunderstanding each other in like 
hilarious ways. So I love that. And I love that it really packs a punch with the mythical meanings in the book. You can't really settle down with one rational viewpoint or something like that. You know, it's not like anybody's right about everything. And everybody sees things with a little bit different perspectives. And it's just really clever that way. I also love the plot, which involves following some advice from this here tree. And rather than like some, you know, fae or a prophecy, which gets kind of vague and confusing and you kind of forget about it. I actually love the way the protagonist kind of tracked the advice from the tree in this book and the plot just was great. I just really loved it. I also love that this has the man behind the myth trope in it, which we know from Simon in the Dragonbone Chair, I think it's called, series by Tad Williams. And then also Vin from the Mistborn series and Kelsier. I really love that trope. I also appreciate that this isn't grimdark at all. It's got some real conflict in it, but it's not grimdark. I read like one or two grimdarks and they weren't my favorite thing, just a little too grim and dark for me. <laughs> this one definitely had a lighter feel and I really liked that. It was really a relaxing type fantasy. It wasn't remotely literary in style at all, but that's okay. You don't always need that. That's what Michael Sullivan accomplished for me. I was able to read it and relax and go to bed. I have also read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and The Princess Bride. I'm not even gonna really talk about these two right now. If you wanna hear my thoughts on these, watch that vlog. And that is the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you found some books that will help you sleep as well. If you liked this video, it would be so helpful for me if you just hit the like button um, hit the subscribe if you want to see more and then there's this little bell icon off to the corner that you can just hit if you want to see more of my content. Your phone will like notify you if you're watching this on your phone. It's pretty cool. I do that. All my favorite booktubers, I get like notifications up on top. So I have three right here. <laughs> there we are. So yeah, I just love that feature. So just letting you know. <laughs> Thanks again so much for watching. Take care and happy reading.